this has been out, this film, around various parts of the world, um, and, and it's had its premiere in London. Um, it's gone down rather well, hasn't it? It has. It's gone, it's gone amazingly well in Australia, and uh, it was sort of one of the top top ten documentaries, and it, it did a open, not open, but it played at the London Film Festival the other night. Tribeca as well, Tribeca Film Festival. Tribeca, Carla Vivari in Europe, and it's um, it sold out at London like in 24 hours, you know. OK, Michael Hutchins, um, a quiet enigma, I think. Um, mm. Obviously, he was extraordinarily famous, but he just had a very gentle way about him from my, from my encounters with him. But when you think about it, yes, he was a rock god, but mm. NXS didn't seem to be a band, you know, that, that went around um, tearing up hotel rooms and throwing TVs out the window. No. Would you agree with that nuanced Absolutely, character? yeah. He, he became a bit of a victim of the stereotype of the louche rock star who, you know, you have to lock up your daughters in case he seduces them. But, um, no, he was, was not like that at all. He was, yeah. Was that a character that he sort of fell into and ended, have, ended up sort of having to respond to in a way? He had to respond to it. I don't think he fell into it because he kind of never, you know, he never really became that. He, he unfortunately, you know, went for a period with the long hair yeah, and yeah. the, the cat-like moves and everything. And then he sort of realised what the kind of trap or the stereotype he was falling into and then changed and but it was kind of too late the the tabloids jumped yeah. on that image it know? was interesting wasn't it because you, you say you say he changed but then in the end the rock star life did for him i suppose yeah. but sort of it was almost delayed was it, it was almost it was almost a, if you if it was going to happen you you'd have thought it would have happened a few years before and he was almost out out of the fray absolutely but the film sort of reveals one of the major reasons why that kind of happened and it was a medical reason that you know, no one actually knew about except helena christensen who finally sort of spilled the beans in the film like why he actually did change and become that sort of not didn't he didn't become but he started losing his temper and the michael that i knew never had a temper you know it was completely the opposite but well the michael that you knew seemed seemingly had sort of moved out if you like he had, but he'd also had an accident in 92, which, which basically he kept secret from everyone, and the accident really affected his behaviour, and he got mi his behaviour got misinterpreted as that rock star behaviour, but it wasn't. He was actually suffering um, traumatic head injury, and no one knew. And so as a documentary maker, as a filmmaker... You know, what did you want to achieve? What do you want to... Do you want your, your mate to be sort of, sort of realised for, for who he was all the way through his life, beginning, middle and end? Did you want to help us all out by giving, giving us a bit of enlightenment? What, what, I, what just, you... I just wanted, and I felt it was fair for musical history as well, I wanted an authentic portrait because I'd seen other documentaries. There'd been a miniseries in Australia. And there were the miniseries. Yes, and the actual... Um, nothing in any of that stuff reminded me of the person I actually knew for 10, 15 years. And so I, I actually just felt it was fair for, you know, before I disappear off the planet, <laughs> to actually leave an accurate portrait behind of, of who this guy actually was and the musical abilities he had and certainly the performance abilities like on stage he was, he was so charismatic kind of wasn't he unparalleled, and yeah. in excess you know again uh, you know a, a sort of not a soft rock band but a, a band that has softly remembered in you know the genre of rock you don't really remember them like a hard stadium filling back no, but no. they were weren't they yeah. you don't remember them as a guns and roses but they achieved all that and more they did achieve that but they did it with white funk you know which yeah. was which was different but you know very danceable and you know they were quite revolutionary in in their field for that that time and you know reinterpreting the whole Jim Morrison, Mick Jagger thing, but making it his own, you know. Just... Whenever he came on shows that we were involved with, and he was mm. he was always so nice to everyone. He was yeah. so polite, he was so nice, he was always smart. He'd have a drink, he wouldn't have a drink. He'd always turn up on time for sound checks. He was really, really nice. Um, and women used to faint at the mere mention of the fact that he might be in the same <laughs> county. I mean, the effect yeah. he had on, on women, it was, yeah. like, it was unbelievable. Yeah. But then he was so nice to all the blokes in the room. Absolutely. You know, and then that's that's quite a, a, a fragile tightrope to to navigate navigate yeah in in sort of the 50 something people we interviewed most of them would say the same thing is that once he talked to you and and focused on you it's like nothing else in the room existed yeah, yeah. to him or to you it's like he actually was truly interested whether you were the wine waiter you know on 
what was your best wine. He was really, truly interested in what you had to say. But that's, and, but that's also because he had a vineyard in Portugal. <laughs> did he? Uh, no, he didn't. Well, he I, had a villa in the south of France. No, I used to... Hang on a minute. Back he did, no, up. he did have a vineyard. You're right, he actually. Did, no, I, an olive grove. Olive he had grove. an olive grove. He had an yes, olive grove yes. in Portugal. Because I, I used to see... My... No, no, south of France. Because I went no, there. No, 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 no. Wrong, wrong. Because <laughs> I used to have a place in Portugal. And I used yeah. to go there all the time. And he, we, all, we often found ourselves on the same plane. And it was because he had in a... Portugal. Uh, guaranteed. Mm. Wow. 100%. Yeah. I never knew that in all my <laughs> research. I went on holidays with him and Kylie in the south of France in his villa. Oh, no, I know that. Yeah, yeah. Right, he had this, see, this is the thing. He had the sneaky, the sneaky Zen olive grove in Portugal. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna <laughs> to dig that up. It should be in the estate. The estate's all disappeared, but so who knows? So, when, like you say, it's sold out here. It's been so well received everywhere else. How many in excess fans want to see this? How many, how many in excess fans are still out there? And why? Because it's something... You you know, if there's a Led Zepp documentary or if there's the, you know, the Elton John documentary or the mm. Freddie Mer- you oh, I've got to see that, I've got to see that. Yeah. I didn't react the same way to, to this being in the offing, yeah. but it was with similar enthusiasm, but in a different way. It was like, oh, I can't wait to see that. It was different. Right. As opposed yeah. to, oh, my God, I've got to see, we've all got to go and see the Freddie Mercury. How mad was Freddie yes, Mercury? Yeah. How bonkers was Elton John? You go, yes. oh, no, I'd really like to see that. Yeah. Michael, it's and a it's, different vibe, isn't it? Absolutely. Because it's really about the person, not about the music. It, it's, it works if you don't know who the hell Michael Hutchins is, if you're not an NXS fan or anything. It really, in fact, doesn't have a huge amount of NXS music. It has some of the greatest hits, obviously. But it's the bulk of it is about who the hell he really was. Because yeah. especially in Britain, I don't think people really knew who... I mean, you did because you met him and you interviewed him. But, and um, we're in, aren't we? Yeah. We, we, we yeah, made the final are. cut. I saw all your rushes. If, even the uncut rushes I saw. Yeah. <laughs> did you? Oh, yeah, we, we get everything. Yeah, it was amazing. But, um, you yeah, know, it's... it's it, I, don't, I just don't think, especially in Britain, they really knew who the hell he was. It was sort of like a lot of people knew of him when he dated Kylie, then the whole Paula schmozzle, and it was just like, we, the Australians, kind of knew we knew him from 17 and everything. So the film really is about the sort of the guy, the how he grew up, the trauma of, of his parents' divorce and how that sort of paralleled what happened to Bob and Paula. It was... It's sort of like psychology 101, you know, Freudian. <laughs> what's, it like, what's it like now to be able to, to talk about a film that you've made and you know people like in interviews like this? What is that like? And I know the people. No, no, you know that people. You know that people like it because it's already yeah. been well received. What is that? Yeah. What is that like? Oh, it's sort of nice, but I, I do feel that I owed it to Michael. You know, it's. I felt I'm not a spiritual person, but I felt sort of you know. You are a bit. The, <laughs> I am now because so many <laughs> weird things happened that was you know fell in my plate in the making of this film. But I do feel I feel good because I felt I've done him a justice. You know, I can die happily. You know, I, I not think, that that's going to happen anytime soon. I think it's always funny when people say all oh, these amazing things have happened recently. And I always go, yeah, and you were born. That's pretty yes. amazing. <laughs> yes, yes. You can't really construct that. No, no. Okay. But there, are, there's, there, there has been things like getting the music in the film and all that sort of stuff. It's just, it's, and some of the archive, when you see the film, it's like, how the hell did that happen? Yeah. You know, Kylie and Michael on their first date, I have footage of it, yeah. and it was in my attic the entire time. I didn't know. What else then, is in your attic? You know, what that, exactly. <laughs> you better get back there soon. You do soon. not want to know. All right. The Chris Evans Breakfast Show with Sky. This has been out, this film, around various parts of the world um, and, and it's had its premiere in London. Um, it's gone down rather well, hasn't it? It has. It's gone, it's gone amazingly well in Australia and uh, it was sort of one of the top, top ten... 